Today I'd like to talk to you about mindfulness. It's something that I include in my work with clients and I also use it to support myself. And there are many benefits, short and long term, for physical and mental and emotional health and clarity of thought processes. So you can imagine at a time like this, it can be really valuable and um, it's something that I'm sharing with a lot of people for the first time. So I thought I would record this video. And my name's Anna Bell. I'm a coach, trainer and mindfulness teacher. And I work with people individually and in groups from a variety of, of backgrounds for a, a number of different reasons. And what it really comes down to is supporting people with, with changes or things that they want to learn about themselves that might be because of events that have happened in life or a milestone, um, maybe a birthday or a change in circumstances. And it might be things that have come about because of changing work situations or, my uh, goodness, you know, with the events that are happening in the world just now, that brings about um, a, a kind of um, prompt for reflection and, and, and raising awareness and choice of, of what's possible in life um, when so many things are not within our control. And um, mindfulness can be described like weather patterns. It's not, your mind is not the same every day. And nor is it about clearing your, your mind and being completely calm and still all of the time. If In fact, it's more about noticing with curiosity. So imagine how a child would explore it, a beginner's mind, you might say, um, and having that attitude of curiosity. And a definition of mindfulness brought to the West, really, from um, by John Kabat-Zinn, from Eastern philosophies that run back into ancient times, and really every every um, pre pre history being documented, every uh, civilization, every culture that there's ever been has had some understanding of, of mindfulness and being mindful and what it can bring to us and bring out the best in ourselves and and um, and help us to reflect on where we are in our lives and in the moment as well. And the definition that, that John Kabat-Zinn uses is that mindfulness is a state of being aware in, in the present moment on purpose without judgment. So it's a state of awareness and meditation or sometimes mindful activities will support us to become mindful. And so meditation is the thing we do and mindfulness is the, the state of awareness. And as I said, the, the, the noticing um, and observing your thoughts, your physical sensations, um, and what's going on for you, it might be how you're feeling at a certain point in the day is different um, and you notice that it can be useful to check in with yourself. And it's not uh, about perfection or striving or judging, saying I should be able to do this. And that's often what puts people off, regular practice. And it's the regular practice that brings the long-term benefits. So for example, if you sit for a few minutes a day, and I'm going to do a three minute breathing space in, in a, a moment, um, if you sit every day, then you're, you will begin to notice changes in your thought process, in um, how you react and respond to, to things that happen in life. And over time, things like your, your brain becomes more um, capable of concentrating on one thing. Our minds apparently wander around half the time. And I don't know if you can hear this, but outside my window right now there's someone with power tools. That's kind of symbolic of what life can be like sometimes. It was silent when I started, but there you go. Um, so if you, if you notice that, then tune it out to the background and just follow, follow um, my voice. Um, and so our minds are to have a tendency to wander. We're wired like that. We're actually wired to scan for threat. So we are programmed to notice things like if I walk out my front door and there's a lorry coming along too fast to deliver something in the street, I need to be switched on and alert to jump out of the way. Or in um, you know early, early days of, of civilization, um, of humans having to run away from predators and uh, maybe other tribes, coming to, to get them, you, you might need your attention like that to be able to respond and fight, to fight for your life. And neuroscientists, the same ones who measured how much of the time our minds are wandering, um, which is around half the time, that's astounding. And yet, in some ways, maybe not surprising. Um, by by recognising which parts of the brain light up, they're able to understand that the type and uh, severity of reaction to emotional threat 
is very similar to that of physical threat or threat to life. So it's no wonder at the moment, an example would be if someone comes towards you in the supermarket or you turn around and they're right there and they're not two metres away. Um, of course, that's likely to have a response for some people more than others. Um, and it can be heightened by the times that we're in just now. And so practicing mindfulness for a few moments a day or even by noticing simple daily activities can, can really support you um, to develop a practice which, which, which um, can make a difference in, in your life. And first of all, what I'd like to do is invite you to join me in a three minute breathing space. And so um, as long as you're not driving or anything like that, don't, don't take part in any meditations or anything. If you're, if you're driving or doing anything you need to focus on, if you're free to sit and close your eyes for a couple of minutes, then have your feet flat on the floor and your body comfortable but upright and your arms resting in your lap or wherever they feel comfortable. and gently closing your eyes if you haven't already. And bringing your awareness to the breath. And notice how you feel in your mind and body. Simply observe. Whatever you find is welcome. And follow the gentle rise and fall of the breath. The cool air on the in breath. And the warm air on the out breath. Noticing the gentle rise and fall of your shoulders. And how the breath goes into your tummy, through your chest. And if your attention wanders, or you notice anything that takes you away somewhere, gently bring yourself back. Imagine a bit like walking beside a friend or family member. If they drift off to the side a little bit, gently bring them back. Your attention is the same. And with the breath going on all by itself with a natural rhythm, you can centre yourself by bringing it back to following the in-breath and the out-breath. And you can do this at times of the day the start and the end of the day can be really nice to do and also if you need a moment of space or to feel centered and give your mind something else to focus on this brings your attention in a way that can be peaceful and still and accepting whatever you find and slowly beginning to Bring your awareness back with your feet on the floor, feeling your body in the chair. And you might like to have a little stretch, wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So giving yourself a minute or two to come back into the room. And of course, with longer meditations, you definitely need to take your time and, and ground yourself afterwards, maybe with a drink or a biscuit, something like that, a piece of fruit. Um, and notice how you feel now, where your awareness is, um, maybe an intention for yourself, for what you do next or for the rest of the day. And um, these, the, the breathing techniques is one of a number of ways that's really accessible, especially if you're new to meditation and mindfulness. Of course, there are uh, some people who will take it further to become um, maybe go to regular classes or become teachers. And there are a few, of course, who are um, practicing monks in various traditions, and that's a way of life for them. And whatever, 
whatever you feel is of benefit to fit into your life and especially at a time if you're looking for something to support yourself then this could be um could be worth um doing it a little bit more often and what i'm going to do is add on um to the links attached to this video add on the three minute breathing space and also um a meditation that's sensory so um when we use the senses, that gives us something else to tune into that can really support being present, having our attention on one thing. So there's a meditation for a few minutes to imagine visiting somewhere you love. And I've done this with people in recent weeks and um, one lady did it twice and went to Harris one time and Bali another time. Um, various different, there was one in Hawaii and one went to her granny's house in the past in a memory, which was lovely. So um, whenever you feel drawn to visit, then you can take yourself there in your imagination. So I'll attach that one too. And also the body scan, which can be really useful to notice how your body's feeling, pick up on areas of tension or uh, discomfort and using breathing and, um, and visualization to, to support yourself. That one's I think nine or 10 minutes long, which uh, could be really nice to do. And for day-to-day -day things, uh, you know, the next time you wash your hands, notice the feeling of the soap between your hands. Um, the bubbles, the smell, um, what the, the liquid looks like in the bottle, or maybe it's a bar of soap. Using all the senses slowed right down one by one to notice and then be aware how you feel after that. Your morning routine can be a good one to do because you might have shampoo, shower gel, um, tooth, toothbrush, the sound of the brush on your teeth, the rhythm of the, the brush moving in and out your mouth and the feeling of the bristles and the flavour of the toothpaste. Um, whatever your toothpaste is like. So these things um, can help with mindfulness in general and it doesn't have to be uh, long meditations and of course the more you do the more you can benefit. So I hope, I hope that's been useful. If you would like to follow any more, um, my, my business page is Annabelle Coaching where there's also tips and tools and uh, blogs, uh, things to read which can um, I'm offering to support you at this time. And please do reach out if, I, if you'd like to have a chat and talk about how I can support you in any way. Um, so thank you for listening and bye for now.